That's true. Naked Palpatine. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that one? Fresh out of the clone tank, nude Palpatine is my That's well, the first thing I think of when you say Dark Empire Palpatine. Hello, everybody, and make sure to walk with rhythm, and welcome back to my Dune reviews, which are not Star Wars reviews. Don't worry, they're coming back. I just gotta finish this trilogy, and then I'll go back. I'm gonna do two trilogies of Star Wars and one novel, and then I'll take another little break, and then, you know, full force with the Young Jedi Knights, Junior Jedi Knights, um, Visions of the Future, um... And Survivor's Quest and all that. And I might take another small break before getting into New Jedi Order because that's a whole big adventure of itself, you know, with a 19 book series, so which I have read before. But uh, don't worry, Star Wars is coming back. But uh, today I wanted to discuss, and I don't think it's gonna be for too long, um, I didn't really take too many notes. The second book in the Schools of Dune trilogy. Uh, in the second book, of course, by Frank Herbert's son, Brian Herbert, and co-authored by Kevin J. Anderson of the Jedi Academy uh, Acclaim from um, the Star Wars universe and, of course, the Tales of the Jedi comics that he helped write with Tom Veach, uh, and plus the multiple short stories from uh, the Star Wars universe as well. And the young adult series he did, Young Jedi Knights and Junior Jedi Knights. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, um, I loved it. Again, so... The main gist of this book, so here's the thing, right? So the original Dune series is, is a very unique story, uh, one of, the, you know, the classic sci-fi, right? Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, it talks about, you know, it, this is already far in the future. We don't know a lot about stuff. So the previous trilogy I talked about was 10,000 years in our future, right? And um, it dealt with machines, and everything, and, you know, a lot of people have issues with that, because it's supposed to be that mankind was actually the true threat, you know, and it was never actually the machines. And that's a debatable topic in of itself, but, you know, that's been taken care of. It's been 80 years, chronologically, since the end of the final book in that trilogy. And we get into the first book, and we start seeing the Butlerians, who originally the Butlerians were a movement to destroy the machines, which eventually succeeded. But that movement turned into all technology is bad, or most of it is bad. So Manfred Toronto continues his, his rise to power, I suppose, with this fanatical way of going about things, right? And trying to eradicate all technology. And he religiously, truly, utterly believes this. Um, and on the opposite side, you have Joseph Vanport, who's gotten so pissed off with um, Manfred Toronto. Joseph Vanport being basically the... Um, the guy in charge of the how everybody gets through space currently because already at this point everybody's kind of become addicted to melage because they have figured out how to travel through space without using machines um and so he he kind of has a monopoly like an unparalleled monopoly on this entire thing like there are there are competitors within this universe currently that are you know are able to do like the same thing but they're doing it not nearly as well with higher death rates and everything because uh, the fold space or whatever is dangerous. And the only ones seeming to do it successfully are the navigators with Joseph Vanport because Joseph Vanport has um, um, these mutated people, I mean, the navigators. Norma Zenva being one of them. Nor Norma Zenva was originally part of the Sisterhood uh, in the original or in the first trilogy I talked about, which the Sisterhood is still yet to turn to the Bene Gesserit. That hasn't happened yet. It may not even happen by the end of this trilogy. It may happen in the 10,000 years where no stories actually take place. I don't know yet. Um, but it's to me, it seems like it's not going to happen. It's going to happen off screen, which is okay with me. I like you know, I like some things you know, not being exactly shown. Um, but so Joseph Amport is building up people with like-minded minds that are pissed off at Manfred Toronto. Um, that, you know, because Manfred Toronto is pretty violent with his religious crusade. Um, and so you have this guy, like this guy named Plotomy, Pl Plotomy. I don't know if frick you say his name, but um, he, you know, 
he tried to do something really nice for Manford because Manford is he can't walk. He his legs are gone. So they make uh, in the first book they made robot legs for him, you know, so he could walk again. And that offends Manford deeply, and you know, so he kills like this guy's best bud, um, but doesn't kill the other guy because he's like, you, you have a chance to be enlightened. You know, I'm gonna let you live. This is this is a warning to you. Repent, change your ways. Uh, and that only fur furthers his fury, so he goes full force of Joseph Vanport, and he starts building like Cymex. And that's the thing too. Without getting too much into the previous trilogy, because I've already talked about it. The reason why I don't think it's a contradiction to the Frank Herbert books, at least from what I've understood of the Frank Herbert books, is because it was very, it was never specific about what happened in the past. It was just very clear that humans were the problem, not really the machines. Um, but Cymex are just human brains in machines, which is different from the AI robots Erasmus and Ominous, which we see elsewhere. Those are two different things. Um, but I might make a video about that at some other point. Uh, but anyway, so those are being built. But where's the meat and potatoes of this story? I mean, that the central conflict, I think, is actually really compelling. Now, while Manfred's kind of simplistic in his, like, staunch belief in this, um, I still think it's a really, really good conflict to be having for this universe. I think it's really compelling. Um, of course, you got Salvador Carino, who is the emperor to the known universe, kind of being a pushover and c capitulating. You know, and the sister is doing its own thing. I gotta admit, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't not, I don't not like it. I just find the sisterhood parts the least interesting. They have not become the Benny Gesserit yet, which I find vastly more interesting. But, you know, what they are currently is like a prototype version of that without fully having all the tenets and beliefs that they have other than furthering humanity, which is why they will most likely end up, you know, siding with, the Butlerians are at least standing on the sidelines and joining with the victor because they just want to advance humanity. And they could easily show the Butlerians that, hey, we can do that without technology, even though they have a hidden computer somewhere where they're kind of... Because the whole thing with the Bene Gesserit is they, like, make calculations and everything and, you know, supplant bloodlines and everything so that history can go a certain way. It's kind of how they do things. Um, but... This book, of course, is called Mentats of Dune, so who we focus on the most is the Mentat school, um, which, of course, was started, we learn because of these books, Gilbertus Albans, who was the son to Erasmus, the robot AI, um, in the uh, first trilogy that we discussed chronologically. And literally, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, say what you will about these books. I don't care if you're the most staunchest hater of anything that's not written by Frank Herbert, the most compelling and most interesting parts of these books is always anything involving Gilbertus and Erasmus. This stuff is gold. It's so freaking good. This is the closest we get to being more like Frank Herbert's stuff. Because everything else is very clearly, like, some parts it's like, well, that's Brian Herbert. And other parts I'm like, that's, that's Kevin J. Anderson writing, right? Because he, he has a style. But I really feel like with Erasmus especially, he's the most compelling character here um, throughout, you know, this whole saga. He's been the most interesting person being, I guess you could say it. He's always fascinating to read about. I love hearing his thoughts and opinions and all that, even though he's kind of a despicable person, though he does grow and kind of change. And Gilbert just, I didn't realize, I won't go into spoilers because there's some stuff that happens near the end of this book, but he, I did not realize how much I'd grown to care about Gilbertus until the ending of this book. I was like, man, I genuinely care about you. I didn't realize how much you kind of snuck into my heart as I read these books, but you did. And Gilbertus is great. He is the leader of the Mentat school. He staunchly does believe in furthering humanity, but he also doesn't hate robots. I mean, his father, the one who raised him, is Erasmus. Rasmus is not a good person, but at the same time, hasn't done wrong by Gilbertus. So, he feels a kinship with him. And Manfred is very staunch on certain things. And that causes conflict between Gilbertus and Manfred. So, what happens in this book? What consequences happen because of certain decisions? You have to read to find out. But as a middle book in the trilogy, I really enjoyed it. In fact, I may have even liked this one more than the first one. More than Sisterhood of Dune. 
I think this is a solid novel. I think anybody that tries to claim that these books are stupid or don't add anything of value to the Dune universe, I think is stupid. Look, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be completely honest. I've only read the original Dune book by Frank Herbert, which was you know, almost a masterpiece. I loved it. You know, it drags on the beginning trying to help you understand the world, but it's wonderful. And I'm sure the other books by him will be wonderful too. I, I'm not denying that. It's, it's a classic of sci-fi. But this world left so much left to explore and to tell. And, you know, it may not be as philosophically deep or whatever, but I still feel like, I, at least so far, maybe in the future I won't feel the same with other stories, but with this one, did it need to be told? No. But does it add a lot? I think yes. As I said, Erasmus and Gilbertus are some of the most interesting characters to be added to Doom, personally. I, I love them. And this book is my stamp of approval because of that. Of course, if you're reading this one, you probably read the first one. But I do recommend this second one. I do recommend the trilogy. I don't know if the third one will be good. Maybe the third one dips super hard, but I, I doubt that's going to happen. It's the same thing when I read Bounty Hunter Wars trilogy in Star Wars. I read the first one. I was like, oh... That's not great. I held out hope. Read the second one. That's not great. And I figured the third one probably wouldn't change my mind. So I doubt the third one's going to change my mind about this trilogy here. But, you know, in the opposite way, in the positive way. So, yeah, definitely recommend. Especially if you are somebody who, who is a cross-reader, you know. Somebody who, you know, comes and watches my stuff mainly for Star Wars. You know, if you like the Kevin J. Anderson Jedi Kami trilogy. If you like Tales of the Jedi comics. And you like Dune, and you aren't expecting the same caliber of writing or even the same sort of style, I think you'll find some happy medium here. Because I think these books are generally worth reading. Um, would Frank Herbert have probably had them be accepted as canon? Probably not. That being said, Frank Herbert is dead. And all rights, I think, go to his son. Hence, there's still more books, so... I mean, if we're going by that way, if we're going like how Lucasfilm did it, you know, back in the day, then technically, you know, all these expanded books are canon to the Dune universe. They may not be canon to uh, Frank Herbert's universe, but licensing-wise, these are the canonical stories that happened before the original Dune novel. And there's nothing you can really do about that. It is what it is. That being said, I like what I'm seeing so far. I've yet to be disappointed. We'll see moving forward. Until next time, guys, make sure to walk with rhythm or the worms may dance around your in or you may dance around the worms' insides. Bye-bye.